Hello everyone and welcome to the widget events lecture, part of the GUI section of this course. So in this lecture we're going to discuss widget events. Um, the events can be something like a button click. So you can see I've already imported some stuff here uh, from the future, imported the print function and imported IPy widgets as widgets. So let's go ahead and start with special events such as the button. And if you go to the Jupyter Notebook that's already available for you, just want to remind you, everything we're going to do is available for you to see here in the Jupyter Notebook. And I may be copying and pasting from this notebook to save on some typing time. But I was mentioning earlier, the button is not used to represent an actual data type. Instead, the button widget is used to handle mouse clicks, as you might expect. And then the button has an onClick method that can be used to register functions to be called, when the button is clicked. And we can actually see more details on this by printing out the document statement. So I can say print, remember I using the print function, so this is uh, Python 3 notation as far as printing goes. And I can say button on click. Notice I'm pressing tab here to see everything that I have available to me. And then I'm going to go ahead and say doc to print out the documentation. So we can do this and we can see that um, register a callback to execute when the button is clicked. So let's go ahead and see an example of the button clicks. Since button clicks are stateless, they actually tran they're transmitted from the front end to the back end using custom messages. So front end is what we see, back end is what we're actually um, typing out. So let's go ahead and check this out. We can say from ipython.display import display and then I'm going to set button just the variable name button equal to widgets dot button and I can pass a parameter here called description and this is what the button's actually going to say so in this case I'll have the description say click me and then I can actually display the button And I'm going to continue in the same cell. I'm going to write out a function called on button underscore clicked takes in um, b, some variable called b. Doesn't really matter in our case. And it's just going to print out button, let's say button has been clicked. And then finally, after all this, I can call that button object, that variable, and say on click, call that function, that on button clicked. So if I run this, I see a button show up. Notice how I can actually click on it. And then we get um, something gets printed there. The button has been clicked string. So let's review what happened in the cell real quick. I created a variable called button. And I set it equal to widgets dot button. So that grabs the button widget from the widget it's library. I pass in a parameter called description equal to click me. That's what the button says. I said to display the button and the button's not going to do anything unless I say call a method on click and then pass the function that I want to occur there. And then on click it calls here and it prints out the button has been clicked. So I can also um, have other methods such as, I'm going to close this right now, on submit. So the text widget has a special on submit event. So right now we're just talking about special events that are particular to certain widget types. So in this case, I can make a text widget and that's just calling text from the widgets. Remember earlier we actually imported everything from um, the IPy widgets, so we were just able to call text here. Since I just imported widgets, I have to call it from widgets. And then I can display text. I'm going to make a function called handle submit. It takes in an argument sender, and then it's going to print text.value. So it's going to print basically whatever the value of that text. Um, cell is. 
So then I can say text and the special event is going to be on submit handle underscore submit. And what this actually does is the odd sum, on submit event fires off when the user hits return or enter on your keyboard. So I can say hello and this actually well, once I click enter here, clicked it a few times, let me try it again to say like dog or something. Every time I click enter, it's gonna call the special event on submit, which has that enter feature built into it. And it's gonna call handle submit, which just grabs the text and spits out the value, which is whatever you put into the text box there. All right, now let's talk about traitlet events. So we saw traitlet when we were trying to link things together. Um, widget properties are basically IPython traitlets and the traitlets are eventful. So to handle changes, um, there's known as the onTrait change method of the widget can be used to register one of those callbacks. So the doc string, I can actually print it out for you guys. I'm gonna go ahead and copy it from the Jupyter Notebook that's already made for you guys. So you can go ahead and check out the document string, but what it does is just sets up a handler to be called when a trait changes. So let's go ahead and see this by example. So I'm going to make a variable called int range, set it equal to widgets dot int slider. So I'm calling the integer slider from widgets. Remember if I had imported everything or with the asterisks, I could have just called int slider. I'm going to display that object int range. Then I'm going to make a function and I'm going to call this function on value underscore change. And it's going to take in a name, a value, and it's just going to print out the value. And then here what I'm going to say is int range and then I'm going to call on underscore trait underscore change what I mentioned earlier and then it's going to call the on value change and I'm going to pass in a string labeled value here so you'll notice what happens is it's actually calling or printing out whatever we have here is the value. So I have on trait change. It accepts the function. And in this case, we want to also pass in that value. So it's going to print out whatever value is going to get a little sloppy. So let me go ahead and close that off and run this again. So you'll see as I slide this, it's going to go ahead and print out the values that I'm sliding on. One more time. If I go all the way to 100, it's printed out all those numbers. Okay, great. So now let's think about linking widget attributes together. So we saw a little bit of link before and we did it from traitlets. So I can say import traitlets. And what I'm gonna do is show you a couple examples of linking traitlets attributes, and this is happening server side. All right, so let's go ahead and see an example of this. And in this case, what I'm gonna do is actually copy and paste from the existing Jupyter Notebook. So if you go to the Jupyter Notebook for widget events and scroll down, what I'm gonna be doing is copying and pasting these two examples here from linking traitlets attributes. All right, so the first one I'm gonna copy is that first cell example. And let's go ahead and break it down before we run it. So what I have here is I have a caption and the caption is equal to widgets.latex. So if you're unfamiliar with LaTeX, it's basically a way of writing out mathematical equations. Um, in this case, we're actually just putting in straight LaTeX as text for the way it's gonna be accepted here. And then I created two variables called slider one, slider two and we have widgets, and then again, we're just calling integer slider with a description, slider one, slider two, as parameters. 
And then as we saw earlier, we're linking them up using traitlets.link. And I'm passing in that first slider one with value and slider two with value. And then we can display them both. So if I click shift run here, notice how they've been linked now. So if I move one and another, they're synchronized. Okay, let's go ahead and see another example of this. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab the text from the second example. and paste it here. So if we just run the cell to see what happens here, we can see we have a source and then a target. And only one affects the other here. And that's because we're using something called D-Link. So this D-Link function allows us to have source values reflected in a different target. So again, we have widgets.latex which will just basically print out any string you put in here. We created the sliders, integer sliders, source and target. But with this D-link, we have the source linked to the target here. In a manner where when we display them, we can move the target around and the source won't change. But when we move the source, the target will change. Okay. Finally, you could also unlink these by calling a dot unlink method on either DL or L, depending on how they've been running. All right, so I already closed them up. Um, last thing we're gonna learn about is linking widget attributes, what's known as from the client side. So when you're synchronizing these traitlets attributes, uh, you may experience a lag because of the latency due to the round trip. So for example, if I grab this one and move it fast enough, you'll notice there's a little bit of lag here. It's a little hard to tell in this video, but if I probably run it here, you'll notice there's a little bit of lag as well. It's a little hard to tell since I'm running them so quickly, but the way to get rid of this is by using the .js link, which will directly call JavaScript to directly link the widget attributes in the browser. So this has to do more with um, how Jupyter Notebook actually displays these widgets using JavaScript as a front end here, or excuse me, um, using these, displaying these widgets using the .js link. But if you go here to the notebook and check out these examples at the very end of the no lag versions, they'll be using .js link and you'll see uh, much less lag than in these first two examples. Now on some computers and some browsers, you won't actually notice lag at all on either one, but if lag is important to you, you should probably use this .js link as a precaution. There's also a .js D link. And you can unlink them again just by calling the unlink method. Okay, so this was just an introduction to events. Let's just go over quickly what we learned here, or what we were introduced to here, I should say. We were introduced to special events, such as a button on click, where you can have things happen when a button is clicked, and on submit, when you can, on submission, uh, when a user hits enter, perform some sort of function. Okay, and then we had traitlet events, which helped us link widgets together. All right, that's it for this lecture. In the next lecture, we'll be learning about what we call the widget list, which is just the list of all the widgets. All right. I'll see you at the next lecture.